<laughs> All right. So um, this chapter is about quadrilaterals. Um, we're going to start with talking about polygons in general. Some of this is going to be review because you've seen some of this stuff and some will not be, but it's fun nonetheless. So um, we're talking about polygons first. So let's recap what a polygon is in the first place. A polygon is a closed figure. Okay, so there aren't any open gaps anywhere. It's formed by a finite number of coplanar segments. Okay, that's key. It's formed by segments, not curves, such that the sides that have a common endpoint are non-collinear, right? So two sides of a polygon are never collinear. They have to be non-collinear, bent at an angle. Now, this is important as well. Each side intersects exactly two other sides, but only at their endpoints. So let's take a look at this first example here. This is a polygon. All of the sides are segments. They are none, no two consecutive sides are collinear, right? So they're all non-collinear. And if you take a representative side, how many other sides does the highlighted one intersect? Two other sides. So we're using the word exactly two, meaning it's exactly two. It has to intersect two, no less, no more. And that intersection has to happen at the end point of the segment. Okay? So it can't have a side crossing through the middle of it. So that's a polygon. The second example is clearly not a polygon because it's got this curve here, all right? Here's another thing we talked about earlier in the semester, a convex polygon and a concave polygon. So just to recap, in a convex polygon, if you extend the sides, none of the lines that you draw cross into the polygon. This is convex. Not so in the case of a concave polygon. In a concave polygon, if you extend some of the sides, you might cross into the polygon. And if you just look at the polygon, the concave one, um, it looks like it caves into itself, right? So that's a way to remember it. It's concave. It caves in. Okay, now, this is perhaps one of my favorite things in geometry. Okay, just, I just think it's so cool. It's important in geometry to be able to figure out what is the sum of all the measures of all the angles inside a polygon. So in the case of a triangle, how many angles does it have? Three interior angles, and if we add up all of them, what do they add up to? 180. And it's important for us to be able to do that not just for a triangle, but for a hexagon and a decagon and a 23-sided figure. Okay? The way we do that is this. So this is a triangle. Okay? <coughs> it's got three sides, and the angles add up to 180 degrees. If you take any other polygon, what you have to do is you have to split up the polygon into sections. And the way you do that is you draw all of the possible diagonals from one vertex. So I'm going to take this quadrilateral here. How many sides does it have? Four sides. I pick a vertex. I draw all of the diagonals from that vertex. In this case, I can only draw one diagonal. When I do that, I divide the polygon into triangles. How many triangles did I divide that into? Two. Now, in this triangle, these angles add up to how much? 180. In the top triangle, these angles add up to 180. Together, 
The red and the blue add up to what? 360. Okay? So that's how much the interior angles of a quadrilateral add up to. In the case of the pentagon, I choose a vertex. I draw all the diagonals from that vertex. How many triangles do I form? Three triangles. 180, 180, 180. Put it all together and you get 540. Question? So we have to go from a vertex to another angle? Yes. <laughs> In the case of the hexagon, I pick a vertex, I draw the diagonals, I create one, two, three, four triangles, and they add up to 720. Okay? And with that, I can create a chart for a whole bunch of quadru um, polygons. So, if you have a triangle, it's got three sides, that creates one triangle, and the sum of the angle measures is 180. And we said that in a quadrilateral with two, okay, we created two triangles, and the sum of the angle measures is two times 180, 540. Now, pentagon has five sides, and when I drew the diagonals, how many triangles did I create? Three. So the angle measures are three times 180. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. In the case of the hexagon with six sides, I created four triangles. So the sum of the angle measures is four times 180. 720. Uh, in the case of the heptagon, how many triangles will I create? Five. So it's five times 180 for the angle measures, which is 900. Octagon has eight sides. You create six triangles. So it's six times 180, 1080. Nonagon, how many triangles do you think a nonagon will create? Seven. Seven times 180 makes 1260. How many triangles do you think a decagon will make? Eight. So eight times 180 for the, so for the angles. How many do you think a dodecagon will make? Ten. Right? So now, for the n gon, what if your triangle, what if your polygon has n sides? With n sides, how many triangles? n minus 2. So you have to try to figure out a pattern between the number of sides and the number of triangles. And if you compare for each polygon the number of sides and the number of triangles it makes, in each case, the triangles are two less than the number of sides. Three minus two is one. Six minus two is four. Nine minus two is seven. So if it has n sides, the number of triangles is n minus two. So if it has n minus two triangles, and each triangle has a sum of 180, that's how many degrees the interior angles of an n-gon will add up to. n minus 2 times 180. So that, bring us, that brings us to our first theorem of the chapter and of the semester, interior angle sum. Okay, so this says if a convex polygon has n sides, then S, the sum of the interior angles, is n minus 2 times 180. Do you have to know this formula by heart? Yes, you do. Okay? So let's just use that. 
Um, find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of each convex polygon. If you have a 16 gone, N is 16, and you want to find S, this is 16 minus 2 times 180, which is equal to 2,520 degrees. Okay? If you have an 8 hexagon, now your N is 8x. So S is 8x minus 2 times 180, and when you distribute, that's um, 1,440 x minus 360. Okay? That's the answer, because your number of sides is an expression, not a constant. Okay, so here you want to find the measure of each interior angle. Now, you're given your angles in terms of algebraic expressions, no numbers. You have to go with the type of shape. This is a quadrilateral. And if you have a quadrilateral, what do all the angles add up to? 360. Okay? If it was a pentagon, it would have been 540. If this was a decagon, it would have been 1,440. Um, 1, now you add up all your angles. So 2 times 2x plus 2 times x is equal to 360. 4x plus 2x, 6x is 360. So x is equal to 60. If x is 60, we can then find the measure of each of the angles. Angle A and angle D are x, so those are just 60. B and C are 2x, so they're each how much? 120. I have another one here. What is the shape of this one? What polygon is it? It's a hexagon. So what is S for a hexagon? 4 times 180, it's 720. Okay, so we're going to add up all of the angles, and let's be efficient with this. How many of the two X's do I have? 2 of the 2x's, plus how many of the 9x plus 30's? Right. Equals 720. Putting it all together, it's 40x plus 120. So 40x equals 600. x is 15. Okay, and again, J and M are each 2x, that makes 30. The rest are 9x plus 30, which makes how much? 165. Okay. I think we've talked about a regular polygon as well. Um, a regular polygon is a convex polygon in which um, all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles are congruent. Okay. So um, in the case of this one, this is a regular pentagon. Okay, so for a pentagon, how much was S equal to? For a pentagon, remember? It was 540. Now, this is a regular pentagon, meaning all five of the angles are equal to each other. 
if they all add up to 540, how big is each angle? What do we do? Right? So each angle is 540 divided by 5. Okay? So each angle is 540 divided by 5, 108 degrees. Okay? So 108, 108, 108, and so on. Now, if you have a square, that's a regular polygon, right? What's S for a square? Three sixty. And if you wanted to find each angle measure, you would do three sixty divided by what? Four. And that would give you 90. Okay? So for a regular polygon, to find the measure of each angle, you just take S and you divide it by the number of sides. Okay? Same, because the number of sides is also the number of angles. So the measure of an interior angle of a regular polygon equals N minus 2 times 180 divided by n. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples here. The measure of an interior angle is given. Find the number of sides. So we have to find n given one angle. So here I have some sort of polygon. I don't know how many sides. Each one of the angles is 135. So imagine if I told you each one of the angles is 108, find the number of sides, and you say, oh, it equals 5. Okay? So this is the measure of one angle. So remember, one angle equals n minus 2 times 180 over n. Remember? Now, this one angle we're told is 135. So that equals n minus 2 times 180 over n. I multiply both sides by n. And let's see what we get. This goes away. 135n is equal to 180n minus 360. Let's subtract n, uh, 180n on both sides. So we get negative 45n equals negative 360. So n is how much? 8. Okay, so this is a, um, it's an octagon. Okay? All right, next, you're given that one of the angles is 156. So go ahead and find the number of sides n for that one. Okay, so go ahead and do that. So once we do this problem, we realize that n is equal to 15. Okay, so it has 15 sides. All right. It's not, it's just a 15 gone. Okay. Let's talk about exterior angles. You remember what exterior angles were. Um, so what we want to do is we want to now look at the sum of the exterior angles. And what we're going to do is we're going to use regular polygons as examples. And then um, we can extrapolate to all the other ones. Let me just draw a couple of these exterior angles. Now, if this is a regular triangle, how big is each interior angle? 60. Now, huh? Right, so when I draw the exterior angle, because they form a linear pair, this is going to be 120. So together it adds up to 180. This is 120, and this is 120. 
the sum of the exterior angles, I have three, which are 120 each. It's three times 120, 360. Now, the next one is a square. That means each of the uh, interior angles are 90. Because now we want to look at the sum of the exterior angles. Before we were doing interior, now we're doing exterior. Let's see if we can find a pattern. Um, here are the exterior angles of a square. And if you put in the exterior angles, if you want to make them a linear pair again, then how big is this one? 90 here, 90, 90, 90. So this time I have 4 times 90, 360, same as the one before. Well, let's do a hexagon. Let's see how the hexagon works. Um, if it's a hexagon, S is 720, right? How big is each interior angle? 720 divided by 6 is 120. So each one is going to be how big for the exterior angles? 60. And we're going to have six of those. So it's going to be 6 times 60, 360. Oh my goodness, what does that tell us? No matter what the shape, the exterior angles always add up to 360. No more, no less, no formula, straightforward. Okay? Even if it's not regular, because these still have to add up to 180. Because if you take 5 away from this, then you have to give 5 to this, and they compensate. Okay? So, if the sum of the measures of the exterior angles is 360, then how big is one exterior angle of a regular polygon? If the sum is 360, and you've got three angles here, how would you find each one? 360 divided by the number of sides. Yes. That's one exterior angle. So I have a shape. It's got 13 sides. What do all the angles add up to? Exterior angles. 360. If, it's had, if it has 13 sides, how big is one angle? 360 divided by... 13. Now, here we want to find the measures of each exterior and each interior angle. Okay? For the pentagon, n equals 5. Now, we have a formula for each interior angle, right? n minus 2 times 180 over n. But look, look, what do one interior and one exterior add up to always? 180. So, remember that. Measure of an interior angle plus measure of an exterior angle. That is horrible notation, but it's okay. Equal to 180. We're going to use that now. So, if you have a pentagon, n equals 5. Each exterior angle equals 360 over 5, which is 72. Okay? Now, one interior plus an exterior add up to 180. So each interior angle is 180 minus 72, 108. In this case, dodecagon n equals 12. So each exterior angle, 360 over 12, 30. Each interior angle, 180 minus 30, 150. Okay? 
Now, here's some more. Find the measures of an interior angle and an exterior angle, given the number of sides. So same thing here. Um, if you have 20 as the number of sides, that's your N. So how much is the exterior angle? Three sixty over twenty eighteen interior angle one sixty two. Okay, here exterior angle three sixty over eighteen gives you twenty, and how much is an interior angle one sixty. So this homework is due next class, all right.